Hi, everyone. I just recently listened to The Beatles with a little help from my friends, and um, it's just been published on my Patreon and Coffee pages recently. And as soon as I put it up there, I started getting so many messages back from my supporters saying, you have to listen, you have to listen to Joe Cocker's cover of With a Little Help from My Friends. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Before I listen, I have a little paragraph to read, of course. With a Little Help from My Friends is the debut album by singer-songwriter Joe Cocker. Huh. He entitled his entire debut album after the Beatles song. <laughs> and he didn't get in trouble for it? Released in late April 1969, it was certified gold in the US and peaked at number 35 on the Billboard 200. In the UK, the album charted in May 1972 at number 29 when it was re-released as a double pack with Cocker's second LP, Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker with an exclamation mark, I should say. When Joe Cocker did this song one year later, he took it to places nobody had imagined, Paul McCartney related in his book, The Lyrics. Well, I guess I'm curious. Well, I was already curious because so many of you have recommended, recommended it, but um, this is going to be a nice and fun first listen, I'm sure. But before listening to this cover, which I understand represents a milestone in the rock genre, I would like to tell you a few words about, actually, the chair I'm using. Now, you might have noticed that up until now I've been using a swivel stool, which is actually my harp stool, along with the by now legendary table that held all the iPads necessary for these recordings. But now since we moved into this new studio, we have more space for recording and the table was actually getting in the way of our new setup. So we took it out, replaced it with tripods for the iPads. And it really is a much better and more flexible setup. I like it a lot. But without the table on which to rest my arms, these hours in front of the camera were starting to become more physically fatiguing and I was feeling it. Since the table was banished, and as a professional therapist, I knew the answer was, rather than a table, a different chair. But what kind of chair could possibly meet my specific needs? Because it had to meet some very specific requirements. The backrest has to be very low profile so it doesn't get in my way, but at the same time, I wanted to find something that provided healthy support for my back. No armrests, none, because they get in the way when I'm handling my instruments and I don't want to be crashing around with armrests into the harp, the piano as I turn. And no wheels. A harp weighs 80 to 100 pounds and it has to lean on my shoulder. That pressure, of course, even if it's balanced well, pushes against me and I can't have the chair rolling away across the floor. I need something secure and solid. Well, truthfully, I was doubtful about whether I could find exactly what I had in mind. There are so many ergonomic office, office chairs out there that are marketed for various needs, but they don't work for what I needed. But I went online, started searching, and I found this company in Canada that builds these really interesting, even perhaps unique chairs. I didn't see anything else exactly like it in my search. So I reached out to them explaining what my needs are, and they sent me this. Carefully packed, even wrapped in these beautiful reusable cloth sacks, which um, are going to become part of my household supply. The company also kindly included a set of fixed feet for my particular needs. And then I started to use it, and I've been using it for the past several recordings, actually, meaning for a good number of hours, and Here's how it went. Okay, so we are at the end of recording with a little help from our friends. You've been sitting on that chair for an hour. What do you think? You like? I like it. Um, I, was, I was not sure how I would make a chair work here because I'm used to having just a little swivel stool, my harp stool actually. And as a harpist, I'm used to sitting up on a stool to play the harp. And the idea is to keep it low profile and have lots of room to move. This chair feels supportive. It sits me up um, in a healthy posture, like I'm accustomed to 
doing for playing my instruments. At the same time, since I am here and not just playing, but sometimes I want to relax, there's this nice little backrest that I can settle into. And actually, if I sit back a bit further, I can also rest and still feel upright. Well, this is which one is of the things that you you missed with the. It's what I missed with the stool because I don't have a backrest, and so if I'm sitting long periods of time, it does get tiresome after a while, no matter how much I keep myself upright. So yes, I guess I feel really good. It feels stable. It didn't creak. It didn't make extra noise. Um, the the feet feel incredibly secure. So now, not only as a professional musician, but as a professional therapist, the question is, would you recommend this to other people, not only musicians? That's why I chose this chair, because I have struggled to find a chair that gives me the kind of posture I need and also the versatility and the ability to move, the freedom to move that I need for what I do. This chair feels amazing in terms of how easily it helps me to keep a healthy posture. Should I get one for myself? Absolutely. And anybody who wants to have a really healthy chair, I think this is great. I, I've never felt a chair better than this as far as sitting you up forwards properly. Because it's all about it's all about how your pelvis sits and how you balance on your sit bones. And at the same time, you don't want to feel like you're having to prop yourself up. And this feels good. It feels really good. That's great. Yeah. I like it. So, with a little help from my friends, I am quite comfortable now. Let's listen. I love the way the crowd is right on it. Oh, that face is way down there. Didn't hear that coming. Do 
I'm going to pause it here for a minute. This is so fun. I love it. Um, oh, I'm going to be so torn between which, which do I like, the original or the Joe Cocker, because they're so, they each have their own flavor and it's so distinct from each other. Um, I was not expecting this. This is my first time hearing Joe Cocker, I guess. And um, I was not expecting this kind of voice, this kind of style, especially with that, um, you know, scalar, fingery, straight tone, organ introduction. I was, I didn't know what I was expecting, but I didn't, certainly didn't hear this coming. And, and so the first few syllables out of his mouth were just, oh, wow. And it's so colorful. That's what is striking me about this piece is, well, two things. His voice and the entire musical arrangement is incredibly colorful, um, varied without being overdone. I like, I like all the little special touches that are showing up. Um, you know, the, the bass is, is way down there. It stays out of the way, but at the same time, it's so important. The, uh, drums, the organ, uh, everything that chorus that comes in from time to time, which is so, so vibrant and energized. When I listened to Ringo's version, the thing that struck me was how warm and open and uh, personal it was. This is all about buoyancy and the well, I'm going to cross, re cross, cross reference a moment here, even though probably this is going to come out on YouTube before, before the Ringo version will come out on YouTube. You'll see it eventually, and then you can compare the two. But when I did my first listen to the Beatles version, one of the things that, um, I commented on was the line, um, I get high with a little help from my friends. And I commented on how it, it really feels like it has a double meaning. Yes, sure, it's referencing um, getting high with substances, but but it's it's more than that. It it feels like in the context and the whole piece, it really feels like it's talking about the uplifting quality that friends have when we're feeling down, when we need a little extra boost. Our friends lift us up. They they hold us high. They, they get us out of the doldrums. And to me, this piece of music, at least what I've heard so far, embodies that uplifting, buoyant, um, the part that the friends play in this whole, in this whole narrative is what the music seems to, to me to capture and express so beautifully, colorfully and if I'm going to pursue that a little bit further, it it's so great that there is such a such a wide variety of instruments and uh, little interjections and tonal colorations and everything. Because isn't that what it's like when we're surrounded by friends? Whether it's just a handful, maybe even just one or two or three, each one brings their own own self into it, and each one is a distinct personality, right? Or it could be a crowd of friends if you're the type who has crowds of friends around you. But the music to me embodies that. And I absolutely love that about it. Okay, let's keep listening. I love that.
I love the answering back and forth. stop it i have to stop it because otherwise i'll forget everything that i want to say um okay i have to say that i love the use of sudden abrupt silence and there was one point where where joe cocker was singing completely a cappella, which is all was also another great uh canyon of silence um straight walls on either side with just the bridge of his voice across, filling filling the space. It was, I love the way that this is working out um, dynamic wise, pacing wise. I I like the the way they that he's keeping such a great pulse and driving it forwards. Remember, and this is life. I. I was just going to comment on, on, on that because it's so well balanced and it's so put together. And, um, I know that live doesn't always come out that way, but this could be a perfect studio recording arrangement of the piece in my, in my mind. And this, this blues influence in the music is just, I would never have thought of applying it to this piece, really. But it's brilliant. I love it. How many times have I said I love it? I should stop saying that. But anyway, um, because I don't want to be too repetitive and kind of wear out certain phrases. But, but you love it. I do love it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Isn't that nice? With the organ backing. We just keep moving on. And here comes his voice. Clarity of the different tonal colors and articulations. I've got textures. His voice. To help me make it. It's building, it's building, and here comes the crowd again. I'm 
those drums. They're wild. I feel like I need to applaud. <laughs> that was great. That was really great. Um, yes, yeah, so which one do I love more? I'm not even going to try to answer that. They're both so unique. Uh, the Beatles version with Ringo's voice or Joe Cocker and his friends, because I hear a lot of friends in this, in this <laughs> performance here, and it's great. Um, this is a type of music this is a piece of music. I won't say it's the type of music, actually, because I don't actually turn this type of music on that often. But this particular piece of music is is something that would go on a playlist when I just need to feel a little bit uplifted. It would it would brighten my day. It would get me up off the couch. I would be I would be uh you know bounding through the house and and suddenly it would change my mood and and lift my spirits in a way that only certain pieces of music can do for me and this would be one of those you know i hope that it has that impact on practically anyone who's listening to it because i'm going to say that i would like to gift this to each of you who needs a feels like you need to be uplifted at the moment and understand that with a little help from your friends we'll get by and um, you'll get by and well thanks to Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends that was just lovely <laughs> I'll see you all soon